because I am extremely excited because this is your turn because I took the hot seat on the history of the Channel Islands, but I'm loving what we got going on here today. <laughs> Absolutely loving this. What, what are you loving about it? So this is Nick's deep dive. Yes. Now, I'll let him get into the subject, but man, you are looking some kind of classy You like today. my lab coat? Oh God, I love I got, it. I got my lab coat on today because today I am a Dr. Nick. <laughs> Dr. Nick. Okay, well, uh, so this is Nick's deep dive. Yeah, yeah. So Kyle Kyle did his uh, history of section, so I figured I'd uh, get in on this and, and do a, a deep dive using my biological insight <laughs> into <laughs> into one specific animal. Instead of cover, kind of bleh, kind of covering like a general topic, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna get into one specific topic. Sweet. And that is killer whales. AKA orcas. I was going to say orca. Oh, sorry. My bad. That's okay. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about orcas or killer whales. Um, top marine predator. Ooh. Ooh. They kill great whites, don't they? I believe they can. Yes. I've heard. We'll, we'll get there. Well, I just, I mean, that's how they're on the top, man. If you're going to take out. That the is true. Top yeah, shark. yeah. Yeah. That is true. Um, so the biggest mix misconception with killer whales is that they're not whales. They are dolphins. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that. Did you know that? I did, in fact. Oh, well, that's boring. Well, okay, well, I mean, I unfortunately had the unfortunate time at uh, SeaWorld as a child. Ah. Yeah. I I've never been as an adult because I know lots of things. What it is. Did you also know that pilot whales are dolphins? Yeah, I did. That's, I was oh, just, man. I wanted to say that. I'm supposed to know. I'm, I'm okay, supposed to be right, like right, teaching right. you this stuff, right, remember? Right, 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 right. Sorry, I'm just... I'm just uh... um, so yeah, orcas, dolphins, they're not whales. Um, they are found in every ocean of the world. I loved that one. That's a pretty impressive. I mean, I don't know of any other animal really that's found in every ocean. Every... Okay, uh, any animal that's in the same family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same yeah. species. Because, I mean, there's like sharks, you know. Right, right, right. right. Um, so they're found in every ocean of the world, but there are many kind of subspecies. They're they're pods, basically. So they're little groups of whales who live in different locations and act differently based on where they're located. We'll get into that in a bit. Would you call them pods because they're in the dolphin family? Or are they like clans or families? They're technically pods. Okay. Yeah. How yeah. big are the pods? We'll get there. Why can't you just, You're getting so far ahead of me, I man. Just, I, I, I like, still got to talk about how they're <laughs> the most distinct marine animal because they are black and white. I was going to say, what makes them distinct? Man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they have that distinct black and white coloring. I'm sure everybody knows what a, an orca or killer whale looks like. Um, males, we'll get into lifespan a little bit here. Males live about 30 to 60 years. Now, this is in the wild. We'll get into captivity later. Later. Uh, females, 50 to 90 years. Yeah. So females way longer than males. Um, way longer. I mean, thirty years. Thirty <laughs> years is quite a bit. I mean, I, I mean, I thought you meant like way longer. I thought you mispronounced. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, they're grandmas, dude. They get into the grandma ages. They do get into the grandma <laughs> ages. Yeah, I think the oldest recorded one is one hundred and thirteen years old. And it was a female. Yes, that's so cool. Yes, um, grandma orcas, roughly twenty three to thirty feet long, and they weigh in at twelve thousand pounds. That is six tons. That's a lot of whale. <laughs> that is, dude, I can't even like putting that into like comprehension, like how much that is, like as weight mm -hmm. and like in terms, that is four cars. Yeah. I that's mean, like, depending on the car, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, like four like sedans. Like that's, it's almost the length of a full size school bus, too. That's a big perspective. There's all been a lot of school buses. What else did we measure in school buses once? What was that? Mm, that's a good question. You said we had something on the show. We were like, oh, that's a school bus size. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, um, so like I said, they're found in all the oceans. Um, they're more abundantly found in the colder waters. So like uh, Antarctica, Norway, and Alaska. Um, I see. They're, they're at least the more well-studied ones because there's a higher population. So of those higher populated areas, there's three main types. You got residents, transients, and offshore. We'll get into all three of those and what they mean here in a second. Um, so residents are basically, if you think about it, somebody that stays in a certain spot, right? So a resident is a fish eating, local, non-traveling whale. So stays in one spot, eats fish, doesn't really move much, 
kind of hangs out, right? Mostly found Pacific Northwest. Um, and most of the time they're eating salmon. Mm. Yeah, right. They eat nice. I know, right? Um, and like I said before, each variation of the orca or killer whale behaves differently. So each group that I'm going to talk about here has different characteristics that go along with it. For example, the residents, they travel in large groups, basically big families. Um, they talk to each other. So each pod of these larger groups of uh, resident whales actually kind of have their own like individual languages. So you'll be able to tell different pods separate from each other based on those languages. Well, that's how scientists and biologists and marine biologists find them, right? Like they put down sonar and they can yeah. hear and they'll listen like, oh, we know this is pod J-K-L-O-P-Q. Exactly. But that's pretty incredible to have to have an animal that literally you can within its the, family yeah. has a different language from another family, like talks that's differently. Super cool. Um, and that's basically, so they make sounds basically because the salmon that they're hunting don't care, right? The salmon aren't listening for that sound. So they're, the whales are okay being loud. Transients basically do not make sound is, huh. is where I'm going with that. Um, but yeah, so they're, they're close to shore, um, the which makes them, yeah, residents easy to research. Um, and that's, that's why. That's like you're, you see like those big, crazy, sweeping, flowing images from Alaska and Washington where it's like the super right. calm water in the trees and you see the orca going out of the surface. Right. Yeah, those are gorgeous. Yep, exactly. Um, transient whales are quite a bit different. Um, they look relatively the same. They're a little bit bigger. Um, For the most part, they all kind of, they all have the similar shape. Yeah, they all have the same, yeah, the, the couple of variations in color and yeah, stuff okay. like that. Um, transient whales are mammal eating. Ooh. So they don't eat fish. They the eat hunters. mammals. Yes. These they're are the hunters. Ah, and going back to this is why they're quiet. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, we'll get there. So um, they move in, uh, north and south along the coast from southeast Alaska and British Columbia as far south as Southern California. So basically from us up to Alaska. Huh. Yeah. I don't know. You can see orcas down here. Yeah, they see them all the time. Really? Well, not all the time, but. I know we see pilot whales a lot down here. Yeah, they see yeah. orcas too. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. Um, they feed on lots of different mammals, um, kind of depending on the location that they're at. So because they travel, there's going to be different food sources. Dolphins, sea lions, and then mink and gray whales are the main three, four. That they feed off of? Yes. Wow. That they I eat. I didn't know they targeted sh- uh, <laughs> dolphins. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's kind of sad. They target their own, their kin, their cousins. I mean, yeah, I guess so, right? Jeez. Dude. <laughs> I thought they were in the north, not the south. <laughs> moving on um so another difference between the transient and the resident remember the resident i said hunts in large groups big families um i think it was 10 to, to 12 ish um they're smaller they're more agile transients hunt in groups of two to six so usually what those groups consist of is the female and the his or her wow babies so just a, a smaller family and the reason they do that is because they they try to be more quiet um, they'll never breach oh, or very rarely breach. Um, and they swim silently underwater, silently underwater for long periods of time, basically because their prey or their prey is smarter. Yeah. Than or are they salmon. smarter or are they just, well, yeah, oh, smarter than a salmon. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> so salmon, salmon's not going to get scared off by whales Clicking talking. And sonar. Yeah, yeah. They don't, they don't yeah. pick up on it. Whereas, a seal or a dolphin will definitely pick up on that. Oh, yeah, especially dolphins. I mean, they're. Um, in the sonar family as well. So yeah, so they'll never use any sort of vocalization between the pod. Interesting. They'll be they'll be dead silent. Hmm. <laughs> um, the last one is offshore. Now, the issue with offshore is they are, of course, offshore. <laughs> We're talking anywhere from like thirty miles to you know a couple hundred miles. Um, basically, the issue with this is that they're very hard to find. Yeah, they're they're not easily researched, and very little is known about them. Um, recently the thing that has been found out about them is that they eat sharks. Now that gets interesting because they don't just eat the whole shark, right? So Mm -hmm. you think of, you think of like great whites or whatever, when they go and eat something, they just kind of munch on it and it's gone, right? Yeah. It's, it's just done. Um, the issue with this is that sharks have that like sandpaper, like skin, right? Right. It's a very rough texture. Now imagine biting on that. It would just eventually just grind down your teeth to almost nothing, right? It would be like taking sandpaper to your teeth. So 
instead of eating the whole shark, what they'll do is they'll actually break open the shark and eat its liver. Liver? Jeez. I mean, it's the largest part of the shark, so I can only imagine. Yeah. But that's crazy. That they... So the, the sharks that they target are called sleeper sharks, Pacific sleeper sharks, uh-huh. and their body is 80% liver. I was going to say, those are the sleeper sharks are big boys. They're, yeah. they're And they're slow, too. Yep. Dang. Yep. So <laughs> the reason that researchers found this out is actually they've, they found some whales. They found a pot of whales. They started following it. And they noticed that they went into like a feeding behavior. And they just... So, so the whales went into this feeding behavior, got all crazy, went down, fed on these sharks. And then all of a sudden, all of the shark meat just starts popping up all over the surface. Oh, jeez. Because I think I've seen a video of because this. Because they didn't eat the actual shark meat. They just ate the livers. Liver. Yeah, I think I've seen a video of this. And it's Isn't that like, crazy? Yeah, and everyone on the boat was just like... In awe, Whoa. I'm sure. Yeah, because yeah. that's just like, really? Like they're that smart yeah. to eat the liver and not to eat... Yeah, I mean the entire just, shark. It just goes to show, like these guys, these guys, these whales are in a whole other dimension than anything else in the ocean. Yeah, yeah, that's that's quite insane. Um, offshore, um, they they run around in groups of like twenty five or more. They've seen them up to, I believe, fifty. Um, that's a lot of whales. And another kind of weird thing about these is they're actually more closely related to the resident whales. So as far as looks and um, color and stuff like that goes. They're more closely related to the whales that don't travel, which is odd because they travel a lot. Right. So that was kind of interesting. You would think they would be more relatives of the transient whales. Um, and like I said, so each group or population, resident. Um, transient. Transient. And thank you. <laughs> offshore. And offshore. <laughs> um, they all have their own culture and personality, which is pretty cool. Um, recently, actually, scientists have been forcing or not forcing trying to persuade um, different species from these groups. Okay. So so they want to make three different species of orca whale. Hmm. Instead of making them all, instead of having them be all orca whales, um, they want to have multiple species because yeah. they basically are. Um, well, something, I mean, when you came to me and you're like, let's do an episode on orcas, I was like, okay, well, I quickly like, you know, we Google yeah. you know, orca. And like yeah, one yeah. of the cool things that I read was like, and you just mentioned it was culture. It was like within their different groups, they're one of the few things that's actually raised in their little family is developed around culture rather mm-hmm. than just like a, like an animal's like a food source or a resource. It was, it's culture. Like yeah. I thought that was the coolest thing. It really is. It's like I said, each one has different languages like that. Yeah. That amount of intellect. I guess yeah. you could say that goes into into having your own language in between your own specific group. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. I mean, that's... And you said language, culture, and then as well, I mean, you said that they're they're always within their family. Like, their kids stay with them, and it's like, that's yeah. that just adds to more yeah. tight-knit. Like, that's just the coolest thing. It's like... It's, it's like little families, It's rolling with your family. Yeah, yeah. it really is. Um, getting into the reproduction a little bit. So females reach, reach uh, sexual maturity between 10 and 13 years old. Um, and as you said they do get to grandma age, which actually means that they do go through menopause. Right. So around the age of 40, females do go through menopause. And as they become this grandma stage, they actually kind of become more of like the leaders of the group. Yeah, the BAs. So you get these like, you get these like awesome grandma whales, basically, guiding that are kind pack. of guiding the pack of That's whales. That's so sick. Um, at least when it comes to the residents. The, uh, the transient ones probably split up a little bit sooner yeah. than that. But um, yeah, the residents, you'll have like the... The old grandma of the group, which is yeah, pretty. It's like, what's her name from Walking Dead? She's just like total badass mode. Yeah, she's the old lady. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, so yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I just, I, I would love to just see this old grandma whale. It's just like massive, like all right? kind of like scarred, just like go ahead and like all the salmon, just like <laughs> I don't know. I just imagine those videos with like just the totally animated. orchestrating the the yeah, like hunting and just being like, yeah. you know, oh, I did, I so did cool. forget to mention with the resident whales, their way of hunting is actually really, really cool. So. Instead of chasing the fish, because that would just be a total waste of energy, and since they have so many whales in the group, they actually use bubble columns. So they'll go down and they'll use bubbles and noises to and then, scare the fish into a group. Right. And then they'll come up and, and breach underneath them, catching all the, all the fish in That's their mouth. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, I saw a video of that, actually. It was in a, it was in a harbor. Up in, yeah, up in yeah, British yeah. Columbia, I think. Yeah, it had to have been because the water was really green too and it was like dark. Yeah, and, yeah. But um, all of a sudden you saw this circle of bubbles and yeah. all these fish jumping in the middle and then you just saw this massive orca come up and, and well, it's swallow so funny. them up. It's so cool to see the northern from the southern and it's like the southern, they do their hunting and they'll, they'll beach things, right? Yeah, like, they'll, yeah. like penguins and, and seals too. Mm-hmm. And they'll go in groups. And the coolest thing is, is like it'll be giant. It'll be like a, um, I was going to say iceberg, but it's like a small piece of mm-hmm. ice. And a, a seal will be on there and they'll 
create waves and knock the thing off. Yeah. It's the coolest thing. Yeah, those are the transient ones, and they they will they'll yeah, literally create waves and stuff to knock well, animals off like of the ice in such a synchronous way too. It's like four or five of them creating this wave, lift their tails at the last yeah. second, and it's just like holy crap. And then you're saying these guys create bubble columns and like surround them and like yeah. using their. <laughs> I just it's, a, rah, it's just crazy. I know, it's like, crazy, right? It's, yeah. Like I said, they each have their own personalities, and that's just. I mean, as far as animals go, there's really not that many other animals that even come close to that amount of no. like communication between a group the only thing in order to hunt is, like that. Like the only thing you can think of is like a dolphin and they're in the same and they're in yeah, subspecies. Same it's, subspecies. That's yeah. yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, females back to the reproduction, females sexually mature between 10 and 13. Like we talked about the grandmas, which is just <laughs> awesome. Like True. who doesn't love a grandma whale? Granny whale. Um, <laughs> G dubs, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> <laughs> um, with males, it's a little bit more iffy. No, not that many people know exactly when they become sexual mature, but it's it's somewhere in between 10 and 17 years. And actually, you brought up something quite interesting. In fact, uh, that they use the uh, the dorsal fin to determine when the males become sexually right, yeah, active. Yeah. Um, when the dorsal fin reaches full uh, height. Yeah. Size. Full size, yeah. Growth. That's, that's when the males erection, become. But, you know. Oh. It's a re- I, it's hey. When it becomes erect. That's what it is. It's, it is. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're right. Um orca whales don't have any distinct distinct breeding season. So there's no like set months where they're where they're focusing on breeding. It's just kind of a year long thing. Yeah. Well, how um, often does this happen? Uh it happens every like 5 to 20 years. Yeah, so not that it's not that it's often. It's not it's not that yeah. often. Um which is kind of odd, but the amount of care that goes into making a baby whale is a lot. Yeah, I which, can imagine. Yeah, we'll get into. It's a it's a lot. Um, one of the really cool things, since we're on the 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 pod and culture thing, I'm sorry. Anytime don't... you say pod, we're both from Channel Islands University, and it's like they always referred to us as like the pod, you know? Because do we're, they? We were the dolphins. Oh, or I am I the dolphin. You were a dolphin. I don't ever remember them calling. Oh us man, that. yeah. The email's called the Dolphin Pod. Hmm. So. I never paid attention to that. Oh, well. <laughs> I was focused on other things. Sorry. Well, you're, you're part of a pod, so okay. you're more well, like a orca whale than you know. We're not part of the same pod, though. <laughs> we're separate pods. I, am I part of the ones that make loud noises? <laughs> you're one of the offshore that's all quiet and stealthy. Is this how this I goes? I eat sharks. <laughs> <laughs> you eat salmon. I will eat salmon that's all day actually, long. That's true. Can, I, can we switch? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to eat a liver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds, Just all day long. Ooh. Um... But yeah, since we're on that topic, one of the really cool things when it comes to sexual reproduction in orcas is that they really worry about interbreeding. Yeah, I was. They they are you're telling constantly about thinking about interbreeding. Well, presumably, um, basically what they do is they they don't breed in into their pod. So if you have a male in the pod, that male will actually go and breed with another pod. Um, and they'll basically instinctively leave that pod in order to do that. Do they? I would take it. I mean, they come back to their pod after they do their business, and then I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you told me earlier they're mama's boys. Yes, yes, they are. Um, and because of that instinctual Drive. diversification, I guess you could say, um, they have one of the most diverse family trees in all of the animal kingdom. Yeah, their gene pool is it's immaculate. Yeah, it's pretty stimulant. impressive how they how they. Instinctually to go and, instinctually, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's that's the coolest thing ever. I mean, it's it's more than humans, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's it really is to like go out of your way, miles out of your way to go find a completely different group yeah. to like. And know. luckily, we don't have to go miles away. No, really. okay, I'm just saying, like, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the males will mate with multiple partners, I guess the females will as well. Um, and like Kyle said, uh, it was five to 20 years. Every five to 20 years, a female will get pregnant. Um, when they're pregnant, it takes about 15 to 18 months. It's a long time being a year, over a year pregnant. A year and a half. <laughs> I can't speak pregnant to any of whale. that because I'm not a woman <laughs> and mad respect to women for being pregnant. Well, but. get this. So the calves, when they're born, are eight and a half feet long and they weigh 265 to 350 pounds. That's a calf and a half. That is a big baby. Imagine Jeez. carrying that around for 18 months. Golly. No. No, no that does not you. sound like fun. I just um, can't imagine like 
how much food they have to eat to to maintain that kind of energy and like to produce a child of that yeah. size. Or so so they nurse every five to ten seconds, or sorry, for five to ten seconds at a time, okay, several, like, <laughs> several times per hour. I was like, do they ever like? <laughs> do they ever stop? <laughs> yeah, just milk. <laughs> yeah, so they'll they'll do it five to ten times a second. Oh my gosh, five to ten <laughs> seconds like, at a time, time. <laughs> several times per hour. You got me all flustered on that one. Sorry. Um, and that goes on literally day and night, 24 hours a day. Man. Yeah. Mad props um, to those mamas. And it takes about a year to wean them off the milk. Jeez, onto solid fish and food onto and solid, sharks. Yeah, once they, once they learn Jeez. how to eat. Man. Um, that is so much protein. That's a lot. I, so I much would, calcium. I would like to look in. I, I tried to find some stuff, but it was it was oh, I'm sure easy to find. But hard to find the chemical um, makeup of an orca's milk. But I want to know how many calories that is, like per day. Oh, can you, how much? I wonder fat how many. That I is? wonder how much. Yeah, fat and calories well, or whatever like, that um, they ingest per day. I forget what whale I was reading about, but they gained something like I think it was the blue whale. They gained something like ten pounds a day. <laughs> Can you imagine putting on ten pounds a day? <laughs> like, let's just put that in perspective, humans. It's like basically a pound a day. Yeah. Right. Sure. Maybe half a pound. That's a lot <laughs> yeah just like all the <laughs> um so yeah so these baby calves they're nursing literally all the time um and what how the, how it kind of works is the the female will actually or the mom will go to the surface and kind of lean on her side a little bit and the baby will come up right next to her and and kind of cuddle cuddle and then <laughs> and then pop back off again um unfortunately because they are wild animals, they only have about a fifty percent survival rate. Yeah, and that's just due to natural causes. It, it's nothing. There's they don't have any predators really, so it's just natural stuff. Yeah, and I'm sure human impact hasn't helped it, but I'm sure it hasn't made like a drastic change. Yeah, human impact. That's that's where we're going next. Yeah. Now that now that we got all the happy grandma whale stuff out of the way, oh grandma whales, <laughs> we get to get into the captivity of killer whales, which is. Well known and well recorded and and very very sad. Yeah, um, it's been in recent news too. I mean, here in 2020, 2021. 2021 now. Yeah. Um, in fact, literally today, I, I posted something about it um, out of SeaWorld, and I, I think that happened a little while ago. It wasn't. It wasn't. We both posted now. about it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I posted first. <laughs> I know. I saw it. I was like, oh man, copier. Um, yeah, that that photo I don't think was that recent. It must have been within the last year, I think. Um, but still, I mean, it's unacceptable. Yeah, it was a uh, it was of two trainers basically standing on top of a adult orca and a and a calf orca uh, surfing basically, like yeah. like pretending to surf on top of these whales. It just ugh. killer whales. Whenever orcas. I say whales, I literally I mean orcas. Just yeah. So everybody knows they're not whales. <laughs> you didn't tell us how they got the name killer whale. Oh, yeah. So it was a misinterpretation by the Spanish, I believe. Um, originally, it was whale killer. Was the people the, of the, yeah, trying yeah, to kill the whales. Right. It was whale killer, um, and they misinterpreted it into killer whale. And that's that's where the it killer stuck. whale came that's from. That's crazy I guess. how yeah. it just stuck. Well, I guess it doesn't help that they, I mean, people witness these things going after dolphins and sharks and stuff. But Yeah, they have a very they have a very aggressive uh, way of kind of way of living. But I mean, I guess. I don't. I wouldn't view it as aggressive anymore. It's it's well, almost a tactical. <laughs> just like, it, yeah, it it's, is. It is tactical. But to see to see an animal literally hunt like yeah. that, like oh, yeah. purposely hunt and have ways of hunting. Yeah, I guess the, I, that's kind of an aggressive way of going about it. Yeah, the closest thing you're going to compare it to is a land mammal, which is and like and to see and them tigers. and to see them, you know, hop up on a block of ice and just rip a sea lion apart. Yeah, or get like basically beach themselves on the people, shore. For people a, get a little freaked out by that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, plus, they're the look of them is is very. Uh, it's stealthy, dude. Stealthy, it's, yeah. It's it's pretty it's cool. It's sick. It's pretty cool looking. I think the the coolest thing is it's just like those. Uh, there's so much uh, interpretation, I guess you could say, of what those big white spots were, and a lot of people were like, I mean, you look at a lot of species of smaller animals, and they have like fake heads and fake tails mm-hmm. and fake eyes, and people mm-hmm. thought it was like that's a fake eye in case anything goes after it, which then was debunked because they have like they no, have nothing, no natural yeah. predator, yeah. but it's still the coolest thing. I mean, like you look at a uh, orca and you think like that big white spots an eye, but it's their eye is like <laughs> this smaller big. up in front. Yeah. 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 That's I, I would be interested in figuring out why, why the actual that reason. Yeah. And, uh, I, it could be from, it could be from history too. I mean, maybe evolutionary back in the past, they, they had, had a, predator. a predator. Yeah. Megalodon. And, could be to be honest yeah. i mean they they could have had that's a what we compared to school buses oh my god full circle Whoa. 
I did it, guys. <laughs> sorry. I, I always went, oh, thank you. Oh, man, I can't believe I randomly right. did that. You're okay, right. sorry. compare Megalodon <laughs> to school buses. <laughs> oh, okay, back to the orcas. Do you remember how Ooh. many school buses it was? No, do you? I don't. I think it was like four or five. I, I think it was definitely bigger than an orca. I'm just so stoked I remembered that. Oh, from tangent. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> All right, my bad. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so we need to get into captivity here. I, I'm kind of, I'm actually kind of avoiding it. I, uh, yeah, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm catching myself talking about other stuff right now because you know, it's, it's really, it's a tough subject and there's a lot of controversy. And when we were working on it together, it was like, we kind of looked at it and we were both like, bah, but yeah. knowledge is power. And yep. it is a part of, I guess, modern day development yeah. of this species not development but you know human interaction with them that's extremely important because it's caused a lot of actual positive things to take place around the world so yeah. let's get into it the nitty gritty all right so here we go so the first orca in captivity orca in captivity <laughs> starting off strong um was caught in november of 1961 and her name was wanda oh yeah she was a 17 foot orca um and she was actually caught by an aquarium here in la uh, marine land of the pacific um and they brought her in here and basically unfortunately i don't even know how to react with this stuff she ran into the walls of the tank until she died the next day yeah so she literally rammed herself to death yeah trying to escape that's that's rough can you man. imagine having like almost no interaction with humans and all of a sudden being put in a tank it's like pff, i don't i don't even know like how do you yeah, yeah it's that's sad how do you sit there and be like, oh, well, let's just go get another one. Yeah. And that's what happened. I mean, that's, that's, that's what they literally did. what happened. So October 1965, Shamu, which everybody seems to know the name of Shamu. It's, um, I know a little bit of history behind that. And sure. it's because it became so popular with like one of the first captive orcas that lived for quite a while mm -hmm. that continuous, like even I think it was recently they had a Shamu at San Diego and it's, they just kept renaming it and renaming it Shamu. Yeah, uh, they had sub names for it, like last names, basically for the Shamus. Yeah, but they always named it Shamu because it was like the, you know, it's like the original. Yeah, it's like Disneyland to them, basically, yep. which is yeah, sadistic, basically. Yeah. So it was a she. Um, she was a fourteen foot, two thousand pound Southern resident orca. So she was a resident orca, meaning she didn't move around much. Um, probably caught off the coast of California, Oregon, Washington, somewhere around in there. Um. And basically, she was caught in order to be friends with another whale, another orca. I would keep, I keep like calling company. them whales. Um, yeah. So Dolphins. in Griffin's Seattle Public Aquarium is the name of the aquarium. And they wanted her to be the friend of a whale orca called Namu. Um, and basically, Shamu basically means she Namu. <laughs> so the female counterpart to Namu. Original. Yeah, very. Um <laughs> Unfortunately, Shamu and Namu did not get along at all. And in 1965, Shamu was sold to SeaWorld in San Diego. Yeah, so that's where that goes all the way around to what you were saying about yeah. Shamu. Um, kind of getting into more general topics here. So during the 1960s and 1970s, nearly 50 killer whales were taken from Pacific waters for exhibition. So for entertainment, Exhibit, basically. Yeah. Um, aquariums and amusement parks found that they could be trained which did not things make things better. It made things much, much worse. Um, the peak of the capturing was in the 1970s, um, and that's when they took most of the most of the whales. Right after they basically found that they could be trained and turned into entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there was one incident basically that was a kind of a pretty big turning point as far as publicity goes for the captivity of the whales and how they were treated. Um, there was a mass capture of orcas from the L25 pod, um, which is in Puget Sound off the coast of Washington. Um, during this event, seven whales were captured. Four juveniles were di uh, died during this capturing, uh, as well as one adult. And <laughs> here's the sad part. So the adult was a female trying to save her calf from being captured. And in doing that, tangled herself in the net and drowned. Yeah. That's messed up. It's it just it's humans, and this is in the 20th century. This is yeah, 1970. Yeah, our parents were alive. It's just like so yeah. So out of the seven that they caught, only three survived, or two. Sorry. And then they were shipped off to yeah 
who knows where. Yeah. Amusement I parks. I didn't get into that. Um, so in, so, you know, the movie Blackfish. Of course. That's, that's one of the major documentaries that went into basically the capturing of orcas and the history of the captivity of orcas. Very controversial film, uh, mainly because it pointed fingers at SeaWorld. It was it pointed and fingers so. at, at those at those main entertainment centers for for these whales, um, and there was a interview in that show that kind of stood out to me um, <laughs> because it's sad. Um, this diver that worked on, I believe he was part of the capturing crew mm-hmm. of those seven whales, um, basically explained what happened to the five that died. So because it was a pretty big deal, if anybody found these whales, they actually split the whales open, filled them full of rocks, tied anchors to their tail, and dropped them to the bottom of the ocean to try to conceal their deaths. See, the part that gets me is like they had this crap with them to like think about the... Well, the fact that gets me is that they, yeah, that they were... They knew that something was going to happen, so they prepared for it. Yeah, they knew that it was a big deal if they were found dead. So they prepared for it. So they prepared for it. Yeah. That's messed up. Um, and these things just want to swim around and eat salmon. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> um, what ended up happening is a few of the orcas actually broke loose from that, from the rocks and the anchors, and floated ashore. Um, and that started to uh, like raise the public concern. That really brought attention to what's going on, um, which is a good thing because it led to the Marine Mammal Protection Act, um, which was passed in 1972 by the U.S. Congress. And basically this protected orcas from being harassed or killed and required special permits for capture. Um, And since then, almost none, no whales have been caught from the Pacific Northwest. See, the thing with that, yeah, from the Pacific Northwest. From the Pacific Northwest. for the United States. For the United States. After this passed, it was actually discovered that there was a hardier set of orcas. And those were Icelandic orcas. Um, basically they were able to survive the captivity. They, they were hardier, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so eight live killer whales captured in Icelandic waters were exported to Marine parks between 1976 and 1988. Um, the best known Icelandic captive is Kiko, I believe is how you pronounced it. Um, and he was caught in 1979 and sold to an Icelandic aquarium. Now, This is a pretty interesting story. It's a very sad story, but it's cool. Um, So he was sold to... not cool. (laughs) It's Yeah, it's not cool, but it's cool. (laughs) You'll see. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's, like I said, it's like hard to figure out how to react to this stuff because it's like... This is a more positive one, I guess. Kind of. Um, There's an attempt at positivity. Yeah, an attempt at positivity. So he was sold from that Icelandic aquarium to Marine Land in Canada, and there he began performing, basically. They taught him how to perform. Um, During that, he began to form skin lesions and was not looking very good, so they actually sold him to an aquarium in Mexico City. Um, There he started to feel better. He started to look better. And in 1993, he became the star of Warner Brothers Free Willy. Everybody knows that movie. The one where the whale jumps over the, the rocks, yeah. basically. Um, now, the cool thing about that movie is it was actually used as a way to raise funds to find him a new home. Free Kika. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's the good part. <laughs> um, so the Oregon Coast Aquarium used $7 million in funds to provide a healthy environment for him to heal in hopes of eventually releasing him to the wild. Um, so in... 1980 or 1998 sorry he was transferred um back to iceland where they kept him in captivity but in the wild um so he was in the ocean but he was still being kind of worked up to being released into the wild um in 2002 he finally was released kind of kind of released (laughs) um because in 2003 he died of pneumonia at the age of 27 so good effort but little too late yeah i mean i think that was the first big push for orcas and freedom yeah. and stuff like that yeah so i mean at least they tried i get yeah they gave it an effort but yeah that it's sucks. like a c for effort yeah. <laughs> no. i remember watching that movie as a kid too and, and being so like such pumped a cool on a movie yeah now it's just, and just like, to like 
know the background all of it. this. It's just yeah. like, ugh. Yeah, okay. exactly. Like, I guess I knew as a kid that the whale was probably trained, but it didn't bother me, I guess. Yeah, well, you don't look at it as a kid. Because it know, wasn't, it was, it was, you were freeing Willy at the yeah. end of the movie. The, the whale gets to live in the wild. Like, yeah, I mean, that's a, it. It's as over. A child, you're naive and ignorant. And that's not negative. It's just no, what you are. And it so just you, is, yeah. You see a Warner Brothers movie. I mean, I think of Warner Brothers, you think of big productions. You think yeah. of, you look at Jaws and you look at, you know, Free Willy and Psycho yeah. and, <laughs> but it's these huge films and they put them out there and they're for money. Uh, yeah. This one had a more positive side to it, but it's all for money. And they're going to do what they need to do. Yeah. So, so it's just like San Diego or uh, say, uh, SeaWorld. SeaWorld. Yeah. They're in San Diego. <laughs> they are. Um, so kind of moving on from the Icelandic stuff, um, the other area that whales were caught was uh, North Western Pacific, um, which is like Japanese waters. Um, so between 1948 and 1972, 1,477 killer whales were hunted and captured. Hunted. Well, uh, combo. Combo. Um, killer whales in these waters today are now rare because they are basically almost extinct. Yeah. They're very, like very endangered. The otter territory here. Yeah. Um. So in 1997, a group of 10 killer whales was corralled by Japanese fishermen banging on iron rods and using water bombs to disorient the animals and force them into a bay. So basically what they did is they rounded up these whales, pushed them into a cove, basically, and kept them in there with nets. Now, (laughs) over the next two days, I believe it was, they basically took pictures of these things and auctioned them off to whoever wanted to pay for them. The highest bidder, yeah. It was, yeah, it was like an auction. It was a fish auction, yes. Yeah. Um, and this also has been done with dolphins, too. Uh, there was a movie actually made about it called The Cove. Yeah. Um, and the, literally the same technique. That's how they basically knew how to do it with the whales is they did it with the dolphins. And that's still happening today. Yeah. Well, there's, the hard part is, too, is it's like, a, I know a lot of uh, northern European countries, uh, you know, rely on whale hunting and dolphin hunting. And that's, been a tradition in their, you know, yeah, tribe in their community for generations and, and centuries, and it's like now getting into today's world where we see this and it's like unacceptable. It's so it's, hard to. It's tough because, like you said, it's a tradition, and I understand that, but it was a tradition because it was necessary. Yeah, they needed to do it. They needed to do it in order to survive, and I understand that. Yeah, but in 2020, 2021, yeah. You don't need to kill dolphins and whales to survive. No, I'm sorry, but there's other ways to do it. Yeah. And I understand it's tradition, but make new traditions. I start a new tradition. Yeah. Go out there and feed the dolphins instead of <laughs> killing the dolphins or whales. So yeah. anyways, uh, so yeah, these, these orcas were held for two days um, before being auctioned to Japanese marine parks. Um, five of the animals were released, and the other five were transported via road or sea to aquariums. And all five of those died. I mean, yeah, the trauma they go through just to get captured. It's just like... I mean, yeah. It, it's its rough. Um, so after after all of this death from the, the wild-caught ones, people that were owning the parts kind of decided to start just breeding their own. Um, so you start getting all these captive-born killer whales, um, which... This is where the controversy starts because it's like it's better, but it's not great. Like I would much rather them take a captive born animal than to take one out of the wild. Yeah, I, I, I we've we've talked about it before with the reef stuff. Um, yeah, I'm, with the reef fish, I, I'd rather take something that's been bred in captivity and put it into another tank than I would taking it from the reef from its right. environment that it's in. It's just a little bit more. I don't, I don't know. know. I think it hits a little bit harder just because it's a dolphin. Uh, it's a, yeah, it's and an the, orca, and they're smart. <laughs> they're smart, and it's also the the reproductive time, and you know the numbers yeah. are just so much smaller than like a, a fish, right? Yeah. I'm not it, justifying. I know it's, that's what I'm saying. Is it's it's kind of hard to yeah. justify it, but but in the beginning too, you'd mentioned just how diverse their lineage is and yeah. their gene pool, and it's like now we're just like turning their gene pool into a chlorine pool. You know, it's like throwing in four or five dolphins and just being like, here you go. Yeah. So the majority of the the killer whales today, um, there's 56 in total around the world. 
33 of those are captive born. So that's a good number, but still. Um, well, I think the positive side to that now is, I don't know if you have your notes there. Now you, whatever you have now, mm-hmm. when I say that, I mean marine parks, amusements, whatever, uh, you cannot breed anymore. You yes. cannot pull from the wild. Correct. So whatever orca you see in captivity now, that will be the last ones mm-hmm. in the United States. Mm-hmm. In the United States. Um, and that is mainly because the orcas were actually dying faster than they were being bred. Mm-hmm. And people finally realized that and realized that it was probably not a good idea to keep breeding these orcas. Right. So it's it's a sad topic overall. Um, I would think, though, like we like to tie it off, I guess it's the negativity and the, the downside has been the loss of that. But we look at the positive side as what has come of it. Yeah. In the end now is we'll never see a marine nope. land park like that, which is awesome. Yeah, because it is screw you, Sea World. Because it's like, you know, they they have their good side <laughs> yeah. of conservation, but they, they went about it very wrong. I just the way that they, yeah, the way that they went about it, you know, fighting to prove that the captive bred whales were okay, yeah, and that it's okay to keep them in captivity, and they're keeping these whales in tiny little tanks. Yeah, and these things have migrations that are yeah. thousands upon thousands of miles, and you know, it's. One thing when you have, you know, when they get in seabirds, you know, and they create this awesome environment, you look at the penguins and they have these huge... Well, right. But here's the difference. Those are animals that were injured in the wild and were brought in because they were injured and they were going to die in the wild. Yeah. They were brought in as rescues. Uh, Look, the same thing with zoos. Yeah. Right? These zoos aren't going out and capturing animals that are healthy and and living in their normal environment. They're capturing animals that are injured or in harm's way and they're rescuing them. Right. It's not the best because now they're living in cages, but at the same time, it's better than dying. Yeah. This is different because they're bringing in living Beans, organisms yeah. that, We're that doing don't well. need to be yeah. captured. Yeah, they, yeah. they didn't need saving. Yeah. And then they're taking them and they're breeding them and messing with their genes and feeding them steroids and, and, and yeah, medications and, and creating these, these crossbred, which would never happen in the wild. Remember we talked about that. Yeah. They're taking literally like different, locations and, and crossbreeding them into these crossbred orcas um in captivity um so yeah so some of the other issues with the with the orcas in captivity just to kind of close it off here um disease and lifespan like i said so in the wild females are anywhere from 50 to 100 ish um in captivity it's it's a little bit iffy like um SeaWorld basically says that this is wrong, but it seems to be like 20 years is like the max as far as captive bred whales go. SeaWorld seems to claim that they're actually better off in captivity, of course, but. I mean, the first thing I think of is like, the first thing I saw was like, they're in a chlorinated pool. Like you treat that water and it's like, we know for a fact chlorine isn't good for anything. It's not chlorinated, but yes, it is treated with chemicals. Well, yeah, I mean, every bit of water technically is treated with some form of chlorine at obviously like very small levels. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's yeah, not yeah. like <laughs> we know it's salt water, right? But I'm <laughs> it's not, not saying like it's, a, like, it's not like your public pool. No, no, no. But they're, yeah, they're but treating yeah. it with chlorine and all these chemicals and medications to make it uh, suitable for these animals when, you know, naturally yeah. they, they're basically turning their immune system into mush. Yes, exactly. And because of that, they're very highly susceptible to diseases. Um, the main one is pneumonia, which we learned about with the, uh, the Free Willy um, Orca. Kiko. Kiko, thank you. And um, bacterial infection. Um, because they're constantly having bacterial infections, they're constantly getting antibiotics. Mm-hmm. And antibiotics, eventually you build up a tolerance. Yeah, to, you, you just uh, they you, stop you, working. They stop it. working. So they start getting these bacterial infections that start to really mess them up. Um, there's one whale, um, Namu. So we talked about Namu earlier. Yeah. Um, and basically what happened in Namu is a bacterial infection that infected his nervous system. Um, and unfortunately he became unresponsive. Um, and at one point he full speed ran into the wire gate of his pen. Jeez. Um, and thrashed around for a couple minutes and then died. Yeah. That's rough. <laughs> yeah. Needless to say. Yeah. That's... Like, I can't even imagine watching that. Um, another issue that you've probably seen if you have ever been to SeaWorld, which I do not recommend, 
um, <laughs> is the dorsal fin collapse. So yeah. in the wild, uh, orcas have a dorsal fin that stands straight up. Yeah, it's very rare to actually it's, have it curved over. Yeah, when they're born, it's curved over, and then as they grow up, and it becomes straight up and down. Um, well, and that was like one of SeaWorld's big things is like, come see Shamu, the whale with the curved dorsal fin. And yeah, like, they, like they use it as thing. an advertisement Yeah, because it was rare, yeah, quote unique, unquote. Yeah, and they, they caused it. <laughs> Anyways, um, this happens due to the collagen that makes them stand straight up, never hardening. So in the captive red ones, it just never becomes straight up and down. Um, there's kind of a lot of theories why a lot of people think, you know, water balance stuff, um, chemicals in the water, uh, low blood pressure from lack of exercise. So because they're not traveling as much as they would in the wild, right? their blood pressure is probably low, um, causing that collagen to never harden. Um, the other one, and I thought this one was interesting, is actually overheating of the collagen in the fin because of the most, the, the exposure to the air. Oh yeah, wow. Interesting. So, so they're actually in the air water so much more than they would be in the wild. Yeah, and that causes the overheating of the collagen. Um, the last, the last issue of the captivity is uh, attacks on humans, which is interesting because you have these animals that are intelligent in captivity, and you're forcing them to do stunts over and over and over again. Yeah, I mean, okay, imagine you as a person got put into a room could never leave the room had somebody come in every day and say hey do a backflip do a backflip do a backflip and yeah they gave you treats they gave you food they kept you healthy ish but they told you to just do backflips every day over and over and over <laughs> you would, would you snap. not would you not go crazy yeah, and want to kill them like what yeah. do these people expect yeah like, exactly. how do you take an intelligent animal like that a highly intelligent animal and not expect them to freak out yeah. so yeah um Captive killer, killer whales have attacked nearly two dozen people since the 1970s, biting during feeding, ramming in the water, like literally breaking bones. Yeah. No, no. Um, and <laughs> yeah, the biggest <laughs> one, actually holding people underwater, trainers underwater and drowning them. Yeah. On purpose. Instinctively. Like this isn't, <laughs> this isn't like a, oops, he like got tangled on, on the orca and drowned yeah. because the orca was underwater. This is intentionally dragging trainers underwater and holding them there until they are dead and then letting them go. Yeah. And that's it. They're not holding them there because it's fun. They're intentionally holding them there to kill them. Yep. Yeah. That's where we're going to end this. That's <laughs> it's good. I mean, like I said though, I mean, it's, it's gotten to the point where now we're on the, we got really, really low and now we're on the upside of it in conservation in itself. Yeah. So, yeah, so there is some conservation. Um, it's, there's nothing really specific. Um, a lot of this stuff has to do with that Marine Mammal Act. Um, but basically, they're they're working on critical habitat des- uh, designation, minimizing whale watching harassment, um, reducing vessel impacts, which is actually a big one. I think we've talked about it with other whales mm-hmm. before. The the sound impact from vessels um, actually messes with their their uh, migration. Migration. Actual, yeah. Yep. Um, and then coastal wide efforts to implement salmon recovery. So. As we talked about, those those uh, resident whales actually eat salmon. Well, the issue with salmon is that <laughs> they're running out. They're they're yeah. I mean, they're basically going extinct as well because of the dams and the rivers and so on and so forth. Um, so that's one of the efforts that that people are working on is to actually save that food source so that the orcas can survive. Um, and then uh, basically the other one is just mitigating contaminants in the water, yeah. um, like usual, uh, preventing oil spills and so more so forth. Um, but yeah, so that's orcas. Um, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I know it's it's a rough one. It's, no, but it's 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 getting positive though. Like I said, yeah. you know, there's efforts out there, and it's it's we're done with uh, Sea World, not done with them yet, but we will be. Yeah. Um. So I think that's an awesome thing, and it's just so much more beauty in the ocean to be seen in these little in little creatures, these massive creatures, massive dolphins. So I think that's epic, yeah. and I appreciate all that information. Yeah. And it's been yeah, fun. It was, it was fun. It was a lot of a lot of information. There's probably a lot of stuff that I missed, um, that we could go into more depth into, but um. I think I think fifty minutes is about good. Yeah, for orcas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's orcas. Um, really awesome animals. If you ever get the chance to watch some of the documentaries or the films, um, of course, Free Willy's still a good movie. It's, yeah, I mean it's an older movie, but it's still a good movie. Um, Blackfish is a yeah. really good one. And if you do get a chance, The Cove is very very graphic. Um, if They're you're, all very educational though, and it's yeah. like I said, knowledge is power. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely check those out. If you're interested in the topic, there's lots of information on it. Um, don't go to SeaWorld. 
Yeah, go to our YouTube page, <laughs> which where you can see Nick in his awesome yeah. scientific outfit. Um, don't don't support a company that is doing <laughs> this. exploiting animals. Doing this. So. Um, yeah, support support the the people that are taking care of those injured animals, like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, but yeah. Uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit the little bell, so you know when we're actually posting videos. Um, every two weeks is yep. our is our routine right now. We're posted on all of your podcast sites as yep. well. Be sure to uh, rate all of those and send them around. That's how we get on those boards and we get acknowledged out there. So uh, thanks for listening to this, guys, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. See you guys.